Hello, everyone. Let's get started with this. I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, we're going to start off with our series uh, on learning about the SBA loan. Uh, this is going to be our first one of our six, and it's going to be some short five-minute type videos to kind of guide you guys. Um, so what we want to do is start off with learning actually what the SBA loan is actually about. Um, SBA loans work with SBA lenders. Understand that an SBA lender is someone that the SBA um, has chosen, whether it's a depository or a bank, or it may not be a depository or bank. Um, they they actually are lenders that's dedicated to just doing the SBA loans. What's good about the SBA loans is that they are backed by SBA. So a bank can take, uh, willing to take more of a risk with you because you're gonna also be backed by SBA. But being backed with SBA also means you have to be backed based on the qualifications that SBA wants you to be, okay? So in that case, when you go to an SBA lender, it's a possibility they can talk to you about a, com a conventional loan or they can talk to you about an SBA. They may not say that name, okay? That's what we've kind of noticed in our field of doing it, that they don't say the name, but we know what it looks like when we see Oh, this is a this is a um, conventional loan instead of an SBA loan. It's a difference, okay? So understand what I'm showing you is what's out here is SBA. I think SBA loans is something that's basically um, that's uh, the type of loan that people are not so aware of. Uh, let me say business people. I'm seeing that that option is there, uh, where the bank itself may turn you down. It may not turn you down with an SBA. Uh, backing you, okay, which means what they do on the SBA size qualifications, the scores can be 650, 6, 640, 650, 680, and I said plus on here because each bank is based on what they want as well, so you're dealing with what the bank wants you to do as well as what's qualified for it to be an SBA backing, okay, it's a uh, financial help for small business with special requirements. So you don't have your credit not where it needs to be. I mean, they're not bad credit, but you know, we don't have the best credit, but you may have your business where it's kind of flourishing and it's doing a lot of things and it's growing. And so therefore you may be a candidate for SBA. We'll know that more by the time you get in touch with us. We'll look at what you have. We can basically tell you which one will work better for you. SBA usually has the lowest interest rate. Their deals are really good. You're talking 10, 25 year. The payments that they're asking you to do on them, I've seen people uh, that we've actually got loans for is not so bad at all compared to when I go conventional. The thing is, you're being backed by SBA, all right? So we'll talk a little bit more about that in this whole series, but let's go ahead and start off with this one. That one thing that's good about the SBA loans, they're good for real estate as part of a business purchase. Not real estate as far as... Um, you want to do real estate investing. When we say business purchase, real estate person, you are in the building, okay? You're in the established, whether it's a strip mall and you're right here where you're 51% or if it's just you in the building all by yourself, okay? Uh, they're good for short and long-term working capital. Uh, it's always good anywhere. And we'll talk about the price. So where they, they start anywhere from 50,000, it could be up to 15 million quarter, what lender you go to, Okay. Uh, so it's good for working capital, uh, refinancing a current business debt. Uh, if you have debt that you collected some MCAs or some line of credit or some other types of debts that you've just built up and you want to bring it all together and pay it off, SBA loans can help you do that. They're willing to take all that debt and get that paid off for you. They're, uh, and they are a lot easier than conventional loans. Like I was saying, they're definitely a lot easier as far as uh, the qualifications of getting you in, but there is some detailed stuff that you have to actually uh, provide. And I'll give you that uh, as we continue. Okay, so next we have, um, oh, sorry. The next one we have is, let's talk about the SBA. And I'm saying seven, eight turns, but but that one is um it's just what they call it. It's a term loan. It's a seven A. And the seven A loan is is what we kind of use when we're working with trying to get you working capital or refinancing a business acquisition, meaning that if you want to purchase a business, um SBA is good at that. It's being someone uh, an area you want to look at and see if they can help you with the purchasing 
of that building or purchasing of that business, okay? They actually have something set up to do that. We actually in the process of doing that and have done several of those. Um, and they're really good at, at, at giving you a good deal on, on that type of uh, business uh, acquisition. They're good at that. Uh, real estate purchase and construction. Now, understand it is for you as being a part of the building, being in the body as a tenant, okay? So, uh, or yeah, as a tenant. So it's not then for real estate investing per se. Uh, if you need to purchase equipment or you need to purchase a lot of inventory, again, SBA, and we're talking about the back end. I've actually seen back in 75, 85%, and it just matters. And it's up to the bank. You know, they know what they're going to get. It's really on their end um, for us, how much percent is going to be back in based on, you know, the SBA. But the fact is you qualify to be back by them. That makes the banks, you know, look at you a little better, uh, it, it, you know, to bring you in is to do loans with you which I don't like them. But anyway, so the loans amount can be, it's 350 to 5 million mainly when we do a lot of these, but we do have some express loans that they do. Some of the lenders do where it'd be 50,000 and above, something like that. So I'm just giving you, again, it's a plus sign on a 5 million because it's really based on the bank. Now understand the bank is the one that's actually giving you the money, but SBA is going to be guaranteeing it on the back end, okay? So they both work together to get you a loan and to get you qualified to make sure you qualify for that loan as well too. Usually what they're looking for in collateral because you do have to have collateral. This is for our business owners. Uh, they'll look at if you own the building. They'll look at your inventory, your furniture, uh, your equipment, your fixture. Your fixture. These are things that are collateral, as well as your revenue, your future revenues and stuff as well. Um, that's what they will look at. So if you have a small business and you have, and you don't have to have all these things to get uh, along with SBA, so let me make sure I understand that. Let me make sure you understand that you don't have to actually have that. Um, it's more of that's some of the things they look for for collateral. But if you actually have revenue and you're doing really good with your business, we can look at getting a loan based on the revenue itself too. Okay, so that that's also a, a plus with this as well. Uh, eligibility, owner operated, and when they say owner operated, they mean like owner occupied. That you need to be there. OK, uh, it is for profit. It's not for nonprofit. This is only for businesses that are doing profit. Usually how they do their loan values, it varies, but you can get up to 90 percent. And when they say that based on your use of funds and how much it is, like I'm just just for this presentation was one hundred dollars. Um, they will only give you $90 and you have to come up with 10 based on what your whole use of fund or what you need. They give you a percentage of what you're looking for. If you're building or doing commercial and all of that, that could be a possibility. But again, that loan value is based on so much, including the income to establish the loan, to, to uh, maintain the loans, as well as your credit. Uh, it's going to matter as well. Uh, and then, like I said, your revenue and what you can actually generate determines as well. And then the project itself, you know, for is it being fundable um, when it comes to you dealing with construction or actually buying a building or rehabbing a building, okay, that you're going to have your business in. That's basically what this one would work with as far as term loans, okay? So then we have our next one is the documents that's needed when you want to apply. Real quickly, guys, you got on the business side, you need a complete business loan application. SBA usually have their forms by numbers, so you're kind of good with that. So the numbers will tell you what type of form you need. Um, so you need the business loan application, a business debt schedule. A debt schedule is basically all the debt that you have that's out on the company that's current you need to have, or even if it's behind, if it's not current, you need to have a debt schedule of all your debt that you have as a company. That's what that's talking about. Internal financial statements are usually like, if it's the first quarter you're in, they'd like to see it. If you're second quarter, well, if you're in the second quarter, they'd like to see the first quarter. Third quarter, they like to see the first and the second quarter. Fourth quarter, they want to see the first, second, and third quarter. So that's what we talk of the year. And they're looking at seeing your financial. So right now we are having people to bring in from January 2023 uh, until June 30th, 2023, those are in terms, those are two quarters. We want to see those. And so those are your interim financials, which is your income statement or profit and loss and your balance sheet. OK, also your ARs and your APs. ARs are account receivables and APs is account payable. We'll talk more about this throughout the series, but those account receivables are what you expected to come in from your vendors, okay? 
uh, which from your client, from your customer, your, your money source. And then account payables, who do you owe in order to do that business? So you may owe vendors like, you know, your supply people. You may owe some of your material folks, where you get your material from, where you get your inventory from. So that's more of a account payable, what you need to pay out, okay? And usually they like to do anything within the ICO. They like to see a schedule of 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, okay? So that's kind of like, they like to see that spreadsheet like that. Your past three years of your federal tax returns, in the business, and then they like to see a proposed lease or your current lease. They want to see that you leasing somewhere. Uh, they like to see that, so we'll, you'll have to turn that in. And then your most two recent bank statements um, for the business, okay? Now, I'm showing you what you need for business because for some reason, sometimes people think your personal has nothing to do with it and your personal does, okay? On the personal side, they want to look at they would like to see a personal financial statement. Again, we'll talk about that a little bit later. A personal financial statement and, and, and SBA, again, has their own forms. We'll make these forms available for you at the end of the series where you guys can have copies of those and see those. Um, but these forms are basically in SBA, the way they like them. And that's the way we try to submit them to you all to fill out uh, for that. So SBA form, personal financial statement, that's just giving a snapshot of what your net worth is, what you own, what you have. That needs to be filled out properly. If you do not know, learn how to fill out a personal financial statement. If you're in business, you need to know how to do that Um, because every year changes. So the next thing is they want three years of federal tax return. This is on you personally, okay? So if you're filing your business where you're filing with a Schedule C, you know, like if you're doing 1040s, a Schedule C, LLC within the business and goes together, that's fine. That's considered your business and your personal taxes. But if you're doing like 1170 or S Corp or something like that, and it's separate, then you should have your own personal taxes and then your business should have that, okay? So they want to see yours too. Management resume, a resume. Now, management resume is not a job resume. It's a management resume. So they want to see that you have experience in the in the company and the business that you're in. So if you have a, uh, let's say a help home help home help uh, business, then they would like to see where you have done home help, you know, uh, experience. Where did that come from? What is that? And they're looking for that as your management experience or what you have had that relates to what you have as a company. Okay, so they're looking for that. Uh, they want. Driver's license ID, you got to have that. Uh, borrower information sheet is just information filled out like an application on you per se as the person. You're the borrower, so they want to have that filled out. That's why I try to tell people your personal does play a role when you're talking about getting large amounts of money or even additional nice, the loan money. It's going to require you guys to understand that your personal is considered. Okay, even though people tell, oh, you don't have to do it with your personal, just do it with your tax ID. Ah, mm -mm. So most recent two months of your bank statements, that's what's needed. And then also they want a statement of personal history. And this is where they are going to be asking you questions more about you on the personal side, just again, to know who you are and the business you're trying to get in. And then of course, an RS 4506T, which is basically asking them to be able to get a transcript of your taxes. So what you turn in needs to match up with RS because they're going to check that to make sure they're matching. Okay. So basically that's what that is. So that's what we are right now with the documents of what is needed. Um, for his personal and business. And then, so the next thing you need to uh, look at is to consider is um, we do have a newsletter, Funding Insiders. Uh, so if you like the information that we give you on this and would like to know more when it comes to getting a loan, then subscribe to our newsletter, okay? At tdjequityllc.net. Uh, and matter of fact, we have it up there, Funding Insiders newsletter. Subscribe to that where you can be informed a little bit more about loans because that's what we're actually doing for our newsletter. So that was it for our Friday uh, favorite. So you all look at, we will see you all next week where we will be talking about uh, more of the SBA loans and the requirements as well. If you have any questions, you all welcome to comment in below. Um, and then we'll answer your questions and try to get back to everybody. But in the meantime, I want to thank you guys and you all take care and have a great day.